Madam Deputy President, I rise to speak on, on this motion. And uh, I note from the outset that it is a very unbalanced motion. And indeed, there were questions asked about whether or not the Greens, uh, why or if the Greens went on this, on this study tour. No, the Greens, uh, no Greens MP that I know of went on this study tour. Wow. And primarily because of the one-sided nature of the itinerary. And the one-sided nature of the itinerary is reflected in the one-sided nature of the motion that's brought before this House. In fact, in a motion that purports to be talking about building an understanding about the complex and various issues impacting on Israel and other jurisdictions within the Middle East, it is extraordinary that in the more than 100 words and five paragraphs of this motion that not one word about Palestine is mentioned. Palestine isn't mentioned. The Palestinians aren't mentioned. The, the, the human rights of the Palestinians are utterly airbrushed out of this motion, just like they were airbrushed out of the itinerary of the study tour that travelled to Israel and some very small parts of the West Bank. In fact, from hearing the contributions of the members who went on this, on this, on this study tour, and from reading the motion, you can see that this is little more than a public relations exercise for the Israeli government. And indeed, it's a public relations exercise that's been run in part um, through the offices of the Jewish Board of Deputies uh, here who arranged it, and as I understand it from, from, from what I heard from the other contributions, in part paid for uh, the, the, the study trip to Israel. For the record, I don't recall getting an invitation from the Jewish Board of Deputies for this visit. However, had I received one, and I don't recall receiving one, had I received one, I would not have accepted the invitation to go on this study group because of the extraordinarily one-sided itinerary um, that it put before the members. Now, if, member, if the Parliamentary Friends of Israel were actually interested in building an understanding of the complex issues in the Middle East, which is what they purport to have been, you would have thought that their, that their itinerary would have included a couple of other places to visit. First of all, surely the itinerary would have, journeyed, would, have, would have included visits outside of the limited confines of Israel, Jerusalem and Bethlehem. How could uh, legislative members of this chamber, who want to get a balanced understanding of the issues facing the Israelis and the Palestinians and the Middle East, travel to that part of the world and not meet with any members of the Palestinian Legislative Council, or at least those members of the Palestinian Legislative Council who aren't currently being held in Israeli jails, many of them without trial and without being charged with any criminal offence. How could you go there and meet with only one of the legislative bodies, meet only with the Knesset and ignore the Palestinian Legislative Council? And how could you, if you wanted to get a balanced understanding of the issues facing Israel and Palestine in the Middle East, go to the other side of the planet and fail to visit Gaza, the world's largest outdoor prison? How could you have not gone to see the way that the Palestinians live under the illegal blockade? Or spoken to the local health workers about the conditions in Gaza? Or the paramedics about how they respond to the impacts of aerial bombardments by the Israeli military? And if you'd gone to Gaza, you would have been able to see the x-rays that the Gazan doctors show of the children's kidneys, riddled with kidney stones because of the saline water they're required to drink, because the Israelis' wells on the edge of Gaza are stripping out the water, the fresh water, from the arterial basin, and that arterial basin is filling up with saline water from the sea. That saline water fills the wells. Most of the water treatment plants have been destroyed by Israeli bombardments. And almost every child in Gaza has kidneys riddled with kidney stones and ongoing health problems. Next time, go to Gaza. Look at the children. Look at the damage. Look at the x-rays. Get some balance in your visit. And if you'd gone there, surely you would have then gone to the West Bank and gone outside of Bethlehem and Jerusalem and spoken to Palestinian villagers whose lives and livelihoods have been destroyed by the apartheid wall. Talk to those farmers whose olive groves have been cut off by the illegal apartheid wall, who can't get to the fields that generations of their family had previously tended because of an illegal apartheid wall built by Israel straight through the middle of their homes, their villages and their farms. Surely you could have also met with people like the Israeli peace activists, such as Jeff Halper from the Israeli Committee Against House Demolitions, 
and spoken to Palestinians who have been illegally evicted from their homes and their land to make way for internationally condemned settlements being built by the Israelis. But no, you spoke to the Israeli settlers, but you didn't go and visit and speak to the people who have been evicted illegally for these internationally condemned unlawful settlements that are now riddling the West Bank. And how could you have not travelled to Hebron and done the Breaking the Silence tour, where former Israeli soldiers would have told you about what actually goes on in the occupied territories, about the violence and the discrimination perpetrated by the Israeli military and the settler movement against the native Palestinian population? Or were they Israeli voices you just wanted to edit out, edit out and not hear? The inconvenient truth, the inconvenient truth, the inconvenient truth of the illegal, violent, discriminatory and brutal occupation in the West Bank. And how could you have not visited the Palestinian refugee camps in neighbouring countries Order. like Lebanon? Order. It's, it's disorderly to interject. And how could you have not visited the Palestinian refugee camps in neighbouring countries like Lebanon, refugees. where Palestinian refugees from 1948, from 1967 and beyond live in substandard third world conditions? And are point of order. What's the right the Honourable the right right Linda Boltz. Acting President. Members during this debate have been heard in silence by all sides. There are some people that may not agree with other views in this chamber. But people's views should be allowed to be expressed in a democratic way. I would ask you to stop members of this chamber yelling down other members who they may disagree with their views. The, uh, the, 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 there has been order, order. There, there is a motion, order. There is a motion on the floor, and members are entitled to share their view. The Honourable Dr Peter Phelps, um, there, there are diverse views in this chamber and they're entitled to be heard um, and on, in, in terms of protocol in silence. The Honour uh, Mr David Shoebridge. Deputy President. And how could you have not visited those Palestinian refugee camps in neighbouring countries like Lebanon, where... Palestinian refugees from 1948, from 1967 and beyond live in those substandard third world conditions and, and are denied their human right to return to their homes, not spoken to them, seen their title deeds, seen the keys that they still hold about their homes that were taken from them in those uh, illegal occupations and those illegal evictions that have been going on for decades in that part of the world. And it is extraordinary, it is extraordinary to note that Labor MPs, one of them notionally from the left, would go to the Israel, go to those small parts of the West Bank, but not travel to Nablus and meet with any of the Palestinian trade unions. And how could any of you have travelled over there and not spoken to the firefighters in the Nablus fire station who were locked into their compound by Israeli tanks and snipers and prevented from doing their job as firefighters and saving the lives and homes of their families and friends for days, for days and days, as homes burnt, ch children and other people died, while the Israeli military shelled and burnt their city around them. This is not a balanced motion. This was not a balanced visit. This was not about getting an understanding of the complex and various issues other than an Israeli understanding other than a very narrow part of the Israeli understanding. And to suggest, to suggest that, um, that having gone on such an unbalanced tour and failing to see the balanced truth, the oppression that Palestinian people face daily as a result of the illegal occupation of Israel, and come back here, put on this motion and preach to the rest of the chamber about truth and understanding, about, about peace and non-violence, it is just extraordinary.